is more than one reason why Arsenal are being slow in this transfer window. There's also reasons why we can't complete deals for players like Calafuri, which we're going to be speaking about. We're also going to be speaking about Nico Williams, Martinelli, Leandro Trossard. But before we get into it, just very quickly, do me the favour, hit like on this video. So the first place we're going to start is, you know, why are Arsenal being so slow? It would seem in this transfer window, we obviously had the Euros and the Copper America, and that would predictably slow things down for Arsenal. But we're also now hearing news that, no, it's not just because of those competitions on why Arsenal are not acting as fast as people would like in this transfer window. There's actually reasons why Arsenal are having to do this. And, you know, a report came out today that I read and is saying, no, look, Arsenal are being forced to act like this because they have to sell to buy because of the restrictions. You know, Arsenal have to sell players before they can go out there and buy these players. Now, obviously, we can do deals, but if you're looking at Arsenal and saying why are we not going out there and signing like a Declan Rice or these big players it is because of these restrictions we had that interview with Mikel Arteta a few days ago or, or a week or so ago and he said no clubs are being asked to act differently now these restrictions are affecting everybody and we're seeing it across the board in terms of a transfer window I don't remember a transfer window being this slow for a very very long time the only team who's actually out there making moves, seems to be Manchester United. They've brought in a couple of players already. Fair play. But the thing is we need to remember also is, look, Arsenal have these restrictions. So do everybody else. You see clubs like Man United going out there and buying players. And I see the frustration. I see people saying, Man United are signing players. Why aren't Arsenal? The thing we need to remember is we are ahead of Manchester United in terms of ability. So, so Man United are having to do things that Arsenal don't have to. Man United are go having to go out there and buy players to try and get up to the level of Arsenal. Now, would I like Arsenal to improve as well? Of course, because if you're ahead, you still have to stay ahead of the competition. And you do that, essentially, by bringing in better quality. Arsenal will do that, but these restrictions are affecting everybody. So I want to get your opinions on it. Do you think Arsenal should be going out there and buying this big £100 million player before they sell the players? Or do you think the strategy is correct? You have to sell your players and then go out there and sign them. Let me know what you think. Also, the Calafuri deal. We're hearing more and more. Calafuri has accepted the offer to join Arsenal. The only club he wants to join is Arsenal. We're actually now hearing that Bologna are actually okay with a fee that Arsenal are offering. 40 million plus 5 million in add-ons. The hold-up on this Calafuri deal is Basel are saying, no, we're sticking to our guns. Like, we want 50% sell-on clause. And Bologna are saying, listen, we've had this guy for one season He's only just earned his international call-up for Italy, and you're requesting 50% of the fee. We only paid four million for him a year ago, and now you're requesting over 20 million for us to sell the player. So that's kind of the sticking point. From what I understand of the situation at the minute, from what I'm hearing, the sticking point is Bologna are not happy that Basel are wanting the full 50% sell-on clause. They don't think it's fair because they've improved the player. They've got him up to a level where they can demand a fee of £40 million plus add-ons. And they're saying, listen, we've done all the work and you're, and you're expecting more than or 50% or of the fee. So that's why the Calafuri deal is being held up. Now, that's not to say that this issue can't be resolved quickly. I'm certainly not at panic stations. I'm not saying this Calafuri deal is being held up and now there's a potential that it might not happen. My feeling is the deal does happen. I think Bologna are just trying to stretch it out a little bit just to try and put a bit of pressure on Basel and saying, look, we might not even do this deal. If you're requesting 50% of the whole fee, we might not do it. My inkling is this deal will happen. I think Basel are going to demand the 50 million. I think Bologna are going to have to pay the, uh, uh, pay the 50%. I think they're going to have to pay it. And I think the player will come to Arsenal. I'm just hoping we can get deals like Calafuri done before the preseason starts. We haven't got that long now. We know we're going to be missing so many players on that preseason. But it is even more important that these new players come in and go on that preseason just so they can get a feel of what it's like to be on that preseason tour, just so they can get to spend the most amount of time possible with Mikel Arteta. I think it's vitally important for new players to be on that pre-season tour. It gives them more time with the coaches to understand not only the styles of play, but the philosophy, the mentality needed. And when you're a young player coming in, I think that will massively benefit Calafuri if he's able to, to make it on that pre-season tour. Because we know players like, I don't know, David Raya might not make it. We're hearing increasingly that Bakayo Saka, Declan Rice, these kind of players are not actually even going to be on the pre-season tour. They might not even be available until the Emirates Cup in a you know, just before the season starts. So 
in my opinion, it's, it's, it's obviously best to get as many players as possible out on this preseason tour. We're just going to have to watch this space on that on this one. It's going to have to be one of them deals that we're just having to be patient on. I don't doubt Mikel Arteta and Edu will get this done because I think they have done tremendously well in the past couple of seasons. It is a different transfer window. The past couple of seasons, we've been kind of spoiled with the fact that we've gone out there and spent massive amounts of money on players that have come in and instantly transformed the team. We are having to act differently. It is maybe a shift of direction for the club. We've gone out there and spent 200 million, 150 million in previous transfer windows. And now the market doesn't allow or the situation doesn't allow clubs like Arsenal to just spend what they want. You know, these restrictions will have effect. And I just think that's something that we're seeing in this transfer window. But we want to speak about Nico Williams as well. I wanted to get your guys' opinions on this because, you know, we've heard Nico Williams is probably the main priority in an attacking sense coming into this transfer window. We have obviously heard rooms of strikers like Giocarez. You know, the links between Arsenal and Giocarez haven't gone away. And I see it in the comment section. So many of you guys want Giocarez, especially since we've heard recently that Sporting over in Portugal, they might actually be willing to lower the fee that they're going to demand for this player. Well, we did hear initially before we come into this summer transfer window, the fee is going to be about £100 million. Some people still wanted to do the deal at that point. I couldn't see Arsenal going out there and spending that kind of money. You know, the the word we've heard from before the transfer window even come around was Arsenal aren't looking to make that blockbuster sign-in. They're looking to do deals that will improve the squad. They're looking to do deals that could potentially improve the first team, but they're not going to be going out there and signing a Declan Rice early in the window. And, and that's something that we've just seen. But Nico Williams was definitely down as the main priority, especially recently, especially with his performances at the Euros. But it seems like Barcelona are wanting this player. We know he has a release clause, so why don't Barcelona just pay it? But the thing that's kind of putting Barcelona off is, you know, it's a 50 million release clause. And the release clause, uh, release clause states that it needs to be paid up front. And we know the financial situation that Barcelona find themselves in. They're not in a position where they can just slap down 50 million for Nico Williams. I think that is good for Arsenal because if Barcelona are trying to negotiate for Nico Williams, if I was the club, I'd be saying, oh, look, these are the terms. You either pay it up front or you've got to pay us 70 or 8 because this player could be worth that. A young 21, 22-year-old player, left winger, who just had those kind of performances in the Euros, but not only that, pair that with the fact that he had a tremendous season last time around. You know, we've seen the prices for players in the previous windows. You know, you are paying a lot of money for great young talents. And that's exactly what Nico Williams is. So if Barcelona aren't willing to pay the 50 million up front, I would hold out. I'd say, OK, you don't want to pay the 50 million. Give us 80 and spread it over. Klarna it. Because Barcelona are not going to be able to slap down 50 million. And this is where I think Arsenal aren't exactly out of the race. You know, just because Nico Williams wants Barcelona as his preferred destination, Barcelona want Nico Williams, it do doesn't necessarily mean this deal has to happen. You know, it doesn't mean that just because he wants them and they want him that this deal will happen because Barcelona find themselves in a precarious situation when it comes to their restrictions as well. So it's definitely one to keep an eye on. I think it does kind of leave a window open for Arsenal to maybe, if Barcelona can't do it, then maybe we can sweep in and say, OK, if Barcelona can't do it, boom, there's your 50 million. But then we have a question ourselves because we know we've already got two great left wingers, Trossard and Martinelli. I'm seeing increasingly a lot of people saying Trossard's probably done at, uh, yeah, Trossard's probably done at Arsenal because of the age profile of the players, uh, because of the player. They're actually happy to let Trossard go this season or next season. I want to get your thoughts on that because I haven't really had this discussion with you guys. Do you think it's time for Arsenal to get rid of Trossard? A lot of people saying if, if we're going to sell Trossard, this is probably the perfect time. And I would understand that, but I would also say Trossard was a valuable first team player for Arsenal last season. Let's not forget the contribution that Leandro Trossard had to this Arsenal team. The amount of goals he popped up with. And I think he has struggled out on that left wing. But we saw it with Martinelli last season. It's definitely uh, a position of the pitch that we need to that we need to give some more attention to. Because, you know, we're, we're struggling to get service out there to the left wingers. Now, 
we've had this discussion before. Trossard managed to pop up in a lot of good moments with some big goals. But in terms of Arsenal's play, if we really want to improve and see an area at a pitch where we can go out there and improve, I definitely see the left wing position as one of them. And I'm not necessarily just talking about in terms of personnel. I'm talking about in terms of getting service out to them. We lack a left footed left back. We, uh, Apart from Zinchenko. Uh, we, we, we lack a left footed Number eight, we see when Rice plays in there, his preferred foot is eight. Uh, his preferred foot is his right foot. So when he's playing in that eight position, naturally, he's going to cut inside, which does isolate the left winger. Because if the right eight cuts inside, he's automatically facing the centre forward or the right hand side of the pitch. And we see that with the left back as well, whether it be Tomiyasu, whether it be Timber. When they're in there, their first thought is get it onto my right foot. When they get it onto their right foot at left back, what are they doing? They're turning into the pitch centrally. So that allows... Uh, Martinelli to be far more isolated because he doesn't have that left footed pass to play it straight up the wing to him to play it up the line to receive it to feet I think that's a massive area of the pitch that Mikel Arteta will be looking to improve on next season I wanted to get your thoughts on it are you worried with the lack of left footed players that Arsenal could struggle down that left hand side again I think that's why a lot of us are excited about this Calafuri deal because I think that definitely helps towards that Calafuri is a left footed player so if you play him at left back the option for the left winger to receive it dropping deep, you know, will be a lot more frequent. That allows the left winger to get involved in play a lot more. And hopefully it can mirror the effects that it's had on the right hand side that's been so effective for Arsenal. But let me know your thoughts on that. Thanks so much to everyone for watching and listening. Before you go, just do me a favor. Like I said, if you enjoy these videos, just let me know. Hit like on this video. Just like it and subscribe. And I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners, have a good day.